Well, turn with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. We'll look in verse 11. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Are you there? Are you getting there? Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 17, verse 11, and it reads, Now it happened as he went, he being Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. Everybody say lepers. lepers. Who stood afar off. Say afar off. Far off. And they lifted up their voices. Say lifted up. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. You remember the last time you said that? Come on, we're, we're not, it hasn't been that long, has it? Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. That sounds like a good church service to me, doesn't it? Come on. Finding the feet of Jesus Christ and just giving him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fell down on his feet and gave him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 17. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Or I think the King James says, has made you whole. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today as we open your word, we open our heart, and we ask, Father, that the Spirit of God, the very author of the word, would inscribe it upon the tablets of our heart, and so that we would have the word within us, molding us, shaping us, changing us. Do not, Lord, let us go home the way we came. Change us tonight. Do something grand on the inside of us tonight. Awaken within us by your Spirit. The voice of praise, the voice of blessing, the voice of thanksgiving tonight. So that as we can be like these men, Lord have mercy on us. Running from the mercy of God and finding the feet of God and giving him thanks for all he has done in our lives. We're a thankful people, Lord. We've come tonight to do little else than to say thank Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. It's all you, Lord. We know you did it for us. We're no, we know we're not that smart. We know we're not that capable. We know we're not that talented. We trip ourselves up, but you seem to be able to lift us up and brush us off and set us on our path again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the church said... Amen. amen and amen and amen. This is a very interesting passage. It occurs towards the close of the earthly ministry of Christ. Somewhere in the last three and a half months of his earthly ministry, it's called uh, the later Perean ministry because that's the region that he's going through on his way to the cross. He has really stirred things up. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And as in doing that, he has really made the, the rulership of Israel angry, and they have sought and plotted to kill him and to kill Lazarus as well, because their fear is, is, that, is that as the people are gathering to him and wanting to make him a king, their fear is, is that Rome will say, there is no king but Caesar, and Rome will send their legions, Rome will crush Israel once again, and all those who are currently in authority at that time will lose their place of authority, and that's why the high priest Caiaphas says, is it not expedient that one one man should die rather than we lose the entire nation. And so they plotted to kill him. It's a very interesting time because some were plotting to kill him. Some were seeking to enthrone him. 
but these ten men didn't want anything political from him. They simply wanted the touch of God. They simply wanted what only God could do to do the impossible, to do the miraculous, to do the supernatural. You see, because they had leprosy, and leprosy had no cure in that day. Leprosy was a terrible disease. It was not only debilitating, it was uh, terminal. In those days, it could take as much as 30 years from, for someone to die from leprosy. If you had leprosy, the saying of the day was that people would point at you and they would say, there's a dead man going to, or a dead man walking, or a man walking to his own funeral, is what they would say. Because over time, slowly, your body would debilitate. Not only debilitate, but it would disintegrate. There are parts of your body that you would not just lose function of, you would lose them altogether. It was a hideous disease. It was a deforming disease. There's a story that was uh, written about in Beth Moore's book, her book, uh, the Jesus, the One and Only. She talks about wanting to minister in a current-day leper colony. And that was one of the things on her heart that she always wanted to do. And she went to one. She got to the gates of one, and she was so overwhelmed by the sight and the smell of it that she literally could not walk through the gate. She approached the gate three times wanting to go through the gate and minister the gospel, and she said she simply could not do it. She left that missions trip never having to walk into it because the, the, uh, the simply the smell of the leper colony overwhelmed her. She said, I, I could not minister the word when I would have been physically sick. Do you all understand what we're talking about here? So these are not just ten fellas. This is not just some small thing. We're talking about the miraculous. We're talking about the impossible. We're talking about no cure, nothing man can do. Absolutely impossible, beyond the realm of human ability. That's what we're talking about. And these ten men knew that Jesus had healed a leper before. Because back in Luke 5, a leper had actually approached him and said, Lord, if you will, you can make me cleansed. And Jesus said, I will be thou clean. They had heard that. They knew that. This is their answer. This is the one. And he's walking by us. We, can, we have to keep our distance because there's crowds here. We have to stay at least 100 feet away. So let's just yell. We'll just scream. Lord, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he stopped and he looked. And the Bible says, when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. They called to him. He called to them. Now what are they going to do? He didn't do it like he had done back in Luke 5. He didn't touch them. You know, Jesus... In his healing ministry, used so many different applications of ministry when he ministered miracles to people. Sometimes he touched folks. Sometimes he just spoke to them. Sometimes there was long distances between his words and the need being met. Sometimes he spit on them. Sometimes he took clay in his hands and made spittle of it and made clay and, and rubbed it on them. He did it all sorts of, of different ways. Wouldn't it be nice if it was the same way every time? Man, we could write a book on that. We could have a doctrine, you know, jump three times and turn around and click your heels. That's the answer. But it's not by formula. It's by faith. Jesus never said, go, your formula has made you well. No, he said, go, your faith has made you well. It's an issue of faith. It's a matter of faith. 
And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Are you going to listen to his word? He said, I hear you. Now I say to you, go show yourselves to the priest. There's the word. What are you going to do about it? We got the word. What are we going to do about it? We want the miracle. He gives us the word. What are we going to do about it? Y'all with me tonight? Y'all agree with me tonight? Hallelujah. Jesus replied, he says, when he saw them, he said to them in verse 14, go show yourselves to the priests. That's as deep as the interaction was. That's all there was to it. There was no big show. There was no big demonstration. There was no miracle on the spot. This was a completely different uh, situation. Go show yourselves to the priests, he says. The priest would confirm the miracle. In, in, in the church today, we come to the church because we have need of a miracle very often because it says, if, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church uh, and let them anoint with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and God shall raise them up. We know that. And so people who have particular needs, miracle needs, serious needs, will come to church to have the, the prayer of agreement. If any two on earth agree as touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them of our Father. So we come together and we pray the prayer of agreement. We bind things. We loose things. But that's not the way it was here. You, you didn't go to the priest looking for the prayer of agreement. You went to the priest when you knew you were healed and they confirmed it. You didn't go to the priest saying, will you agree with me? That I would receive my healing. No. You went to the priest when you knew you were healed. And all the priest did was look at you. He's like a health inspector. He would look at you. Are you healthy? You look healthy. I, I don't see any leprosy on you anymore. You are clean. I pronounce you clean. And now you can join, join the city society again you can lift up your children again you can kiss your wife again you can be part of the mainstream society again we welcome you in you don't have to stay on the outskirts anymore you don't have to cry unclean 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 anymore you're one of us again but it wasn't the priest doing it it was the priest acknowledging what was already done so jesus said go and show yourselves to the priests Interestingly, when he said that to them, they were no more cleansed than they were when they called out to him. Go and show yourselves to the priests. But at that moment, they were not cleansed. They had to make a decision. Am I going to go? I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm wearing leper's clothes. Look at my skin. It's, it's, it's covered with leprosy. Look at how I walk. I, I'm disabled because of my leprosy. Look at my situation. Look at my life. And you're telling me to go and, and show myself to the priest? That doesn't make any sense. Nothing's happened yet. But that's the very moral of the story. you got to step out. Knowing that it will. We don't wait until... We go knowing that it will. And that's the measure of your faith. There is no faith. There is no faith. If you're just going to, I'm going to hang out here until I see, and then I'll go proclaim. No, you go proclaim, and you will see. You speak the things that are not as though they are. Come on, you get in faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Initially, their sight is, I'm no different. I look exactly the way I was when I was calling on his name. Come on. But you walk by faith, not by sight. So with every step that they took, something changes. Pretty soon, that, them nerves started coming alive. Them nerves started coming alive. What wasn't there before became there. Maybe an arm was gone and all of a sudden there was an arm in that sleeve. Maybe they were limping and now they're hopping. Maybe the ears were gone, they couldn't hear, but now they could hear. Maybe the nose was gone, they couldn't smell, but now they could smell. With every step, something changed. With every step, something changed. I'll tell you tonight, every step you take with the Lord, something will change in your life. 
something good is going to happen in your life if you will just walk in the direction that he is sending you to. Hallelujah. You say, well, that takes faith. Yes, it does. That takes time. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. I know. I'm so thankful for the instantlies. I'm so thankful. You know, miracles are, are usually, when you talk about a miracle, it's an instantly glory to God. But healing sometimes is a process. Yeah. Hallelujah. As they went, they were cleansed. Sometimes it's an as they went. Hallelujah. I wish someone would shout glory to God right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the lesson is, you can't wait till the problems are over till you start walking. You just start walking. Why? Because he told me to walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he told me to walk. So I'm going to walk. Why would I do that? He Why would I do it? Because he told me to do it. Why would I say it? Because he told me to say it. Why would I think it? Because he told me to think it. Why would I go there? Because he told me to go there. Why, why, why? Because, because, because. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 There, there's really no greater lesson for us to learn in, in the body of Christ to simply go and do and be and say and, and think and whatever he said, whatever he said. Just, yeah. just do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. We're like, no, I, I've, I've got to have it all laid out. You know, God's got to write it on a stone and deliver it down from Mount Sinai and FedEx express it to me. And I've got to read both sides of it. And I've got, you know, no, no, we don't live that way anymore. We got the Holy Ghost on the inside. Hallelujah. Sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. We need to put on our spirit ears again and start listening to what the Holy Ghost has to say because He's going to get us where God wants to get us. Glory to God. The greatest moment in your life is when you hear God for the first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the leper, so the leper, as the Bible says, as they went... In verse 14, as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Can you imagine that feeling? As you're going, it's like where there was no hand, now I see a hand. I'm going to take another step. Where, where, the, where the skin was, was damaged, now it's like, like a baby's skin. I'm going to take another step. Where there was pain, just pain to walk. Now there's no pain. I'm going to take another step. Where people pointed and ran. Uh, they're not doing that anymore. Now they're pointing and they're marveling. I'm going to take another step. Let me tell you what. When God does one thing in your life, you take another step. He'll do something else in your life. Take another step. He'll do something else in your life. Take another step. Debbie and I have learned you just keep walking. We're just going to keep on going. We're just going to keep on going. We're just, we're just going to keep on going. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. What an adventure this life is. What a great life it is to, lead, to live for Jesus Christ. Glory to God. To be full of the Holy Ghost and stand and live on the Word of God. What a great life. I'm telling you, you get out, get out of the boat, walk on the water. It's time to take another step for Jesus Hallelujah. As they went, they were cleansed. In verse 15 it says, the one returned back. And it says, with a loud voice, he glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving, th giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Why was he so loud, do you suppose? I, I don't think that's very religious. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's agreed on among the ecclesiastical councils and in most denominations. You, you just can't be that way. But you know what? As a leper, he had to be loud. 
because he had to be heard. Unclean is what he said. Unclean he had to shout. That was the law. He had to shout it out. I'm unclean. You don't come near me. Don't come near me. I'm unclean. I'm unfit to be around. I'm contagious. I'm sick. I'm dying. You don't want to be around me. Unclean. Unclean. He had lived a lifestyle of being loud about his death pains and sickness and being a, a, a social outcast and the curse that was racking his body with pain and illness. All that was gone. And now he was at the feet of the one who had spoken life into him. His, he, listen, listen, listen. How many people have been crying at the top of their lungs about their situation and their pain and their problems and telling everybody that they know. But once they get God's answer and God, get God's deliverance, they come into the church and the church says, No, hon, you be quiet, hon. We don't, we don't do that here. You just settle down, simmer down, be quiet. I say, if you can be loud in the hard times, you need to be loud about what God has done in your life. And let the world know. If sickness and pain made you shout, then you need to be all that much louder when you are blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came with great joy, with a loud voice. hundred feet away he had to stay. Now he was at his feet. Everything had changed. And he worshipped him. And he gave him thanks. Giving him thanks. I think it would be a good week. This week would be a good week for us to get a little noisy about the things of God. I think it's a good time for the body of Christ to rise up in one nation under God and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I read an article recently that said this country is tired of Christmas and is tired of Thanksgiving and would like to do away with both of them. Hey, 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 hey. If you want to close the malls, that's just fine with me. But I still got plenty to be thankful about. And I'm so glad that Jesus came and was born into this world, walked this world, was dead, buried, resurrected, is sitting on the right hand of God and has poured His Spirit back into me, has cleansed me with His blood. Oh, yeah, we're going to celebrate Christmas. Oh, yeah, we're going to be thankful at Thanksgiving time because the church of Jesus, Christ has something to be thankful about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Nice haircut. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've heard me say it before. If you love football, Go to the stadium of your choice and shout every time your team scores a touchdown. If you love basketball, go to the arena of your choice and shout every time your team makes a basket. If you love hockey, go to the rink and shout. But if you love Jesus Christ, you find a church where you can go to that still worships and praises and shouts and raises their voice to the one living God forevermore. It's time that the church found its voice. It's time that the church said, no, I will not be quiet. It's time that the church lifted up a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
I think one of the greatest aspects of this, of the, of the miracle, is when the leper returned. Because that's when he decided he would reverse course. And, and, you know, the interesting thing is Jesus never asked him to return. He never told them, go to the priest, have yourselves pronounced cleansed, come back and give me worship. He, he never said that. But he sure expected it. Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. This one leper was so thankful and so blessed that he had to come back and find the feet of the one who changed his life forever. I, I think sometimes that we approach God with our need, seeking a blessing, but not really seeking a relationship. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have ministered on behalf of the Lord, and, and uh, Debbie, you'll, you'll agree with this. How many, how many times have we ministered in the name of the Lord and see a miracle occur? God, do something wonderful for folks, and that be the last time we see them. Because they wanted the miracle. They didn't want the relationship. Isn't that the truth? Look at it in the natural. There's people who want stuff from you, but they don't want you. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? And as soon as they can't get stuff from you anymore, that's it. That's in the natural. Now let's talk about the Spirit. God, if you'll answer this prayer, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Prayer answered, gone. Yeah, yeah, because they want their panic satisfied and they want the need met. They just don't want a lifelong relationship at the feet of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. Whether you see that miracle come or not in your timetable, Find the feet of Jesus Christ and make your home there. The woman told Jesus, even the little dogs can live off the crumbs of the table. If I can just have the crumbs sometimes, just the crumbs of the bread of life, if I can just be at his feet, I'm a happy man. Aren't you? Hallelujah. Let me close with this. Let's break that verse down real, real quick, this passage down real quick. The one who returned, Jesus called him a foreigner. He was not of the Jewish faith, of the Jewish lineage. He was a Samaritan. He was the last one that should have returned. Yet the nine, the nine who were of Jewish heritage, they did not return. But this foreigner, this Samaritan did. Look in verse 15. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, that word healed means, in the original language, it means to mend or repair like a bone, a broken bone being mended back together again. So they, their bodies literally were mended, physically mended, back together again, miraculously. And then in verse 17, Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? He didn't say we're all healed. He said we're all cleansed. See, the first word healed, that's a medical term. The second word Cleansed is different from that word. That word cleansed, that's where we get our word catheter from. And what that word literally means is have all the impurities been removed. Were not all cleansed? Did not all the impurities get removed from all ten? Is what he said. And then in verse 19, he said to the man, Rise, 
go. Your faith has made you well. And that's yet another term. That word well means, some, some will say whole in some of your translations, but it comes from the Greek word sozo, and it means saved or delivered. It's used sometimes uh, in, the, in that context of the delivery of a healthy baby. Delivered. We know it as Christians to have a saved life, to have the abundant life in Christ Jesus. So he starts out with saying, he was healed, put back together again, but not only healed. Jesus said he was absolutely cleansed. All the impurities of his life were cleansed right out of him. And not just cleansed, Jesus said, rise and go, you are saved. You are delivered. What an experience for that man to have. He was not just knitted back together again. He was cleansed of all impurity. He was not just cleansed of all impurity, but he was saved, delivered by the power of God. That's why the angel said to Mary when he said, what name are we going to give the baby? We're going to call him Jesus because he will save, sozo, he will save the people from their sins and that's you that's who we're talking about tonight you've been mended you've been cleansed you've been saved did you get anything out of this tonight hallelujah praise the lord let me close on these two verses faith makes us well your faith has made you whole but faith should also make us grateful in Hebrews 13 and 15, it says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise God, to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise. And then, of course, Psalms 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Amen? Stand with me if you would, please.